All right, hi everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, I think people will still continue to trickle into the room as I go over some of these intro slides. Um, but welcome to our ninth webinar in the Arctos webinar series. Today we will present an overview of reports in Arctos and demonstrate how to set up and format labels, tags, and documents populated with specimen and transaction data directly from Arctos. Um, presenting for us are Andrew Dahl from the Denver Museum of Nature and Science and Aaron Gunderson from the University of Alaska Museum of the North. Um, so before we begin with the content, I just have a couple of brief intro slides. Um, and it just sort of provides you with some basics to familiarize you with Adobe Connect if you haven't attended one of our webinars before. Um, so if you'd like to list your institution next to your name, you can do so by clicking on the list icon at the top of the attendees pod to edit your info as shown here. Um, feel free to use the chat box to type in any questions that arise during the presentation and jump in, in into any chat discussion that gets going. And we'll try to do our best to answer your questions as they come up. Um, I've got all your microphones muted just to ensure good sound quality during the webinar, but I will turn those on during the Q&A if you'd like to talk to ask a question. Um, and finally, one thing we like to request of all of our participants is that you take a short post-webinar survey following the presentation. The URL here will remain available in the pod up at the right-hand corner of your screen throughout the webinar. And the survey only takes about two to three minutes and provides iDigBio with valuable demographic info and us with important webinar feedback. So please take the survey, even if you've done so with previous webinars. And I will be sure to bug you and remind you following the webinar. Here are some general Arctos links. So we do record all of our webinars, including this one. You can find the recordings at the URL listed here. And if you'd like to listen or share this webinar or view previous topics, you can check that out. Uh, you can find out more about Arctos in our user handbook, including how-tos and documentation to supplement this webinar. And you can search our data at arctos.database.museum. Um, and lastly, I want to mention our next webinar on June 12th, which will be an Arctos Help Day. And that's going to be an open office hour style webinar where folks can drop in to ask questions. So we'll have several Arctos working group members in attendance who have experience with various Arctos features and functionalities. So we should be able to address uh, most any question that comes up. Um, so if you do have a specific question or topic that you would like covered, we're encouraging users to click the link below and add them to a Google Doc that we've created. Um, there will, of course, be opportunities to ask questions at the time of the webinar, but it's helpful for us to get a sense of just potential subjects um, ahead of time. And this will also aid us in developing future webinars if there's something that sort of generates a lot of interest. Um, so the office hours will be the first Q&A type webinar that we've done, but if attendees find it useful, we'll likely do more on a regular basis. Um, so please go ahead and um, add a question to the Google Doc if you have one. Um, and that link is also available um, at the right-hand top of your screen, and that will remain there throughout the webinar. So um, great. At this point, I am going to stop sharing my screen and hand it over to Andy. All right. Uh, thanks, Emily. Um, thanks to everyone who's attending. Um, so I'm here today to talk about uh, the Arctos Reporter. Um, the Reporter is a great utility to uh, produce labels and reports and other such things from your Arctos data. Um, we at Denver use it all the time. We print all of our specimen tags, box labels. Um, we do ethanol labels. Um, we sometimes do a presenter. Um, programming labels out of Arctos. Um, so it's really great. You don't have to like copy and paste stuff um, into other formats. So um, we really love the reporter. Um, that being said, uh, it's taken <laughs> a lot of work to get it um, cooperating for us. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of functionality with it. Um, so in that, there's a lot of complexity. Um, so um, most of what I've done is copied other people's reports and then adapted in them to our purpose. Um, I've done that with a lot of help from Dusty, the uh, Arctos programmer. 
Um, he's very responsive and uh, has helped me through a lot of my problems. Um, so I'm just going to walk us through some of the different types of reports that um, we generate, that other people have generated from ArcDOS, um, and then kind of show you how I would create a new report of my own from scratch, or not from scratch, by copying someone else's. Um, if you guys have any questions during this, please use the chat function to ask them. Uh, Emily and Aaron will help me monitor that, and we'll try to be responsive to anything you guys have. Um, so let's see if I can get my screen up. All right. Um, so um, the um, the reporter to generate labels and tags and such uh, is found here in the reports and services. Uh, you go into the labels reports, and you can find the reporter here. Um, this is where all the files um, for each label template live. Um, for all of the institutions. So you can see there's here's our DMNS ones here. Um, We've got MSB, MBZ, um, lots and lots of options here. Um, you can spend a lot of time picking through reports and trying to figure out what's um, most appropriate for your needs. Um, the best way to do that, I think, is just to try and print some reports. Uh, so if you just oops, go to your search page, bring up some data, Limit that to a collection so I get a few less results. So we've got our data here. Um, I pulled up a bunch of birds from our collection. Uh, where you would print labels from is from this drop down here that says manage. Click on that, and you've got options to uh, change your data, but then under print stuff, um, there's a number of label options here. Um, I'm not so familiar with any of these. Some of these you can download tables of your data, which then you could input input into other programs for creating your labels. Um, but in this print any report option here, you can use the uh, label templates that are created and stored in Arctos. So I'm going to go down and select our birds intakes. <coughs> Print report, and ArcDOS will pull all of the data from all those specimens that were in the search and drop that all into our tag template. Um, once everything is in here, um, typically I spend a fair amount of time going through and verifying that all the data um, was in the right fields in our uh, ArcDOS entries and then made it onto the tags appropriately um, before I print them. Let's go back and there are a few quirks to this. Um, for example, if I select my box label for our skeletons, print up report. Oh, it worked now. <laughs> Earlier I got in there. Um, I, there's certain fields in the report printer which don't like special characters. Um, I think on the search I had done earlier, I had um, a pound sign in some of my other identifiers. Um, something like that will give you, Let's see if I can create that so you guys see what that air looks like. There. This is a very common error that I get a lot. Um, so it's saying that this is the um, cold fusion code which I used to fill out one of my fields. Um, it says that that's an article, or a valid cold fusion expression. Uh, I have learned that that means more often than not I have a special character in this field or that's trying to populate into this field from my data. Um, 
Let's see, that was my, that's kind of my measurements and remarks area. So probably have some pound signs. Yeah, here's pound sign. Um, so you might have to go through and clean up your data a little bit to get these labels to print as you want them. Um, but um, certain labels, if you're pulling from the right fields, um, won't have any problem with that. Now you can see right there, I just um, I selected a report of ours for our mammal collection. And you'll see, even though I pulled up bird data, it will populate this um, these labels into our mammal labels. Uh, so you can see we've got ZM, which is our code for our mammal collection, not our bird collection, which is ZB. So that's a hard-coded um, field in there. So you want to make sure you're um, either selecting the right label or you have modified your labels to appropriately reflect the collections that you're uh, trying to print labels for. Um, what else? So there's a few, let's go back. Um, so mostly what we use our collections for are creating labels for specimens. Um, some other collections do use uh, the report generator for um, for annual reports, such as this one here. And uh, here we go. Um, this generates a, a summary of accessions for um, the 2016 calendar year. So you can do things like that. You can get it to pull all sorts of data. Uh, if you have specific needs um, and it's there's not a report already existing, that's kind of like what you want. Uh, you can probably work with Dusty to figure out how to get your data out and into a report. Um, storage locations. This report here generates um, storage locations, um, gives you uh, specimen numbers, the taxon, whatever information you require, like the disposition, location, condition. Um, pretty handy tool. And then there was one more I was going to mention. It was this ledger. ledger. And then this is a um, specimen by specimen listing, uh, essentially a ledger listing. Um, we use a similar report like this um, for printing out paper copies of our catalog. Um, this, and it doesn't like that. Sorry. And here's what our um, our catalog, our ledger records look like. Um, you can see it pulls out all the data that we have. If we had all this information on um, measurements and such, that would all populate. That was kind of a sparse record. Here's a better one. Um, so you can use this for that kind of record keeping. Um, so. If you guys uh, want to do this yourself, you're going to have to uh, find the appropriate report. Um, again, pull up some data, go to print any report, sift th through these until you find one that you like, and then you can copy it and edit it as you need. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start that process. So if we go back into the reporter, Go here. Some of these. And I am going to make a copy of our um, sorry. 
make a copy of our uh, mammal label. So um, there's two components to this. There is the um, cold fusion template, and then there's the handler, which um, uses SQL to pull the data from ArcDOS, and then it pushes it into that cold fusion template. Um, so you can access both those here. You can look at the handler. Um, and then you can also download the Cold Fusion report. Um, to be able to edit these reports, you're going to need the Cold Fusion Report Builder. Um, that is a free download on the web. You can just Google Cold Fusion Report Builder. And it will come up as one of the first entries. There's more downloads. Go to the Adobe page, and it's right here. Download Cold, Cold Fusion Report Builder. Um, it's nice that that is freely available software. Once you have that, you can open up these template files. You can see um, it's a bit of a jumble and hard to read like this, but each one of these is either a label field like uh, this, or we have our institution name um, that you double click on and um, you can edit it as, as necessary. Um, say we want an and instead of an ampersand, it changes that there. Um, we actually use the ampersand. Um, but then we also have, so that's a label, then there's um, fields, and this is what Arctos will put your data into. So um, you can have hard-coded things like this where I'm telling it I want you to print ZM uh, in that space every time, and then um, the data pulled from Arctos, which is the catalog number, cat number. Um, you can also, here is another example. We have it pulling our higher geography and then also our specific locality. You can get a little more uh, complicated if you're familiar with cold fusion um, and uh, get a little fancy here. I'm just trying to um, get it to present things like if there's not coordinates entered with this specimen, um, I don't want it to show commas or um, semicolons for nothing. So that's what this is doing. It's checking to see if there is coordinates. Um, if it is, it will display them. If not, it displays nothing. Um, same here. That's what a lot of that is. Um, a lot of that can be done before you put it into Cold Fusion in the handler. So here's the handler for this report, and you can see um, there's three basic components um, to the SQL process, um, the select, the from, and the where. Um, select is telling it what data to pull. So um, unless I'm wrong about this, I think everything is pulled from the flat files. Um, so for each specimen, it's essentially a one row with all the data or possible options of data. So you're telling it which fields you want it to pull, um, higher geography, specific locality. Um, but then you can do things like this. Uh, you can ask it to round the latitude and longitude before it pushes it into the report so you don't have so many digits. Um, you can get it to code the sex in the format that you want. So this is taking your sex identifications and um, making it display the way you want. Um, these options here are pulling all attribute data. So uh, it's pulling out the information that we want it and naming it um, as a simple name that we can then put into the Cold Fusion report. Um, the from command here is telling us where, do, where does it get all this stuff. It gets it from a flat file. And 
where in the fl what flat file it's uh, you want it from the flat file that matches the numbers the catalog numbers that you search for. So um, let's just make a couple of little changes here. Um, so that we can see that our report is changing. Number. You can also, um, sorry, you can change the whole format of the label uh, if you need. So you can change the size uh, and um, you can change the size of the whole label, the size of your fields. You can edit the, um, the formatting within each field. So you can change it from bold to plain text, you can make it italic, you can strike through things, uh, you can change the size. Um, lots of things you can do. One thing I can't figure out how to do is flip it 180 degrees, but uh, if anybody has any ideas about that, let me know. Um, Uh, here in this little function, we are um, removing the frozen from our tissue. Um, so the tissues are stored as muscle, parentheses frozen, parentheses. Um, that was just taking up extra label space, so we uh, got rid of that because we know all of our muscles are stored frozen, etc. Um, there are other options here. You can do headers and footers um, for the whole report, for each column that you're going to print, for each page that you're going to print. Um, I'll show you some examples of what that does. Okay, so once you've edited your um, your label template, you need to save it under a new name. Uh, that's very important. Um, if you upload a file, one of these uh, Cold Fusion templates that has the same name of an existing file, it's just going to overwrite that. So um, if I change this all up and then went back to my reporter um, and saved it under the same name, choose my file and upload it. Um, it's going to write over that old one. So, so if you're using someone else's report, please, please, please make sure you do not do that. Uh, they will not be very happy with you. Um, so I'm going to save this as... Minimal label tests. Save. And then I can choose that file to upload. Oops. Minimal label test. Upload file. And then it should appear oh, down here as a new option for labels. Um, you can see the second column is blank here. Um, and you don't have some options here. That's because we haven't fully finished this template. Um, the second column is the handler name. Well, we haven't created a handler for this, so we're going to have to do that. Um, you can click on create handler and you'll see um, this screen. You can change your report name and this is going to be This is which template, which uh, Cold Fusion file it's using for this handler. Um, there is the option of doing pre functions, which I'll come back to later. Um, it's a way of manipulating the data uh, before it sends it to your, to your template. 
um, and then you can choose what kind of report you want it to produce, PDF, flash paper, RTF, we use PDF. And then there's space for the SQL commands. Um, so usually what I do is I will open up the handler that I'm copying, copy that, go back into this one, paste that in, and then I can edit this as necessary. Um, if I if I decided I needed the verbatim date, um, sorry. Are we having some issue here? No, but you look. I can see everything just fine. <laughs> sorry, something popped up. Oh. Uh, so yeah, now we can see you're not sharing, but I think I'm just looking at my connect. Yeah, there you go. Um, sorry about that. Um, so I can add uh, fields that I want to pull verbatim dates, and then. Um, Hit save handler, and it will add that to the list of things that it pulls. Um, and if everything went smoothly, um, you can then let's see, let's refresh this and see if my file has a handler now. Test. Yep, has handler name and got to save it after I change the name. Do that. I created the second one when I did the handler. Save the handler. It didn't like my name because I used a space. Get rid of that. Try to save it again. That worked. Then I can go back to reporter and here, mammal test. That's the one that I want. Um, so then we can return to a search. And we can test and see if that all went according to plan. Go back, oops, sorry. Go back to print any report. Find the mammal test in this list here. which I don't see. Um, there it is, sorry. Print report, and I've gotten there, of course. So I gotta jump back to my handler. See what I did wrong there. Oh, I don't have a comma here. Didn't like that. Um, so 
save that. Try again. There, and you can see this is my new label, which I messed everything up um, because I put the bounds of that box outside of the thing. The labels are overlapping. Um, that's something you want to try to avoid. Um, so, um, that's essentially the process. Um, I don't, are people, is anyone seeing the chat window? Um, I, I don't know how you would respond. Can you guys raise your hand? Well, I think they would chat in the chat window if they could hear or see the chat box. But I'm told here that folks cannot see the window. Are you, oh, are you able to see it, Aaron? I can see it, yeah. But that's because he's a presenter. Yeah, I can see it as well. All right. You can keep going, and I'll try to add a different chat pod. All right. Um, Aaron, was there anything in there that... Oh, there's chat. Can people see this one now? Maybe if someone other than Aaron writes in there, in there we're going to be better. Okay. All right. So... Um, so this is great for printing um, labels for specimens. Um, like I said, that's mostly what we use it for. Uh, but you can also use it for printing other kind of reports. Um, I just was adapting um, one of the loan invoices from the MBZ report. Um, so we could use that in our collections. So I'll kind of show you what that's like. So I'll bring up one of our loans. Um, use this ship loan. Um, you can see is over 100 specimens of chipmunks. We can look at the specimens that are included. So this is an existing loan that We've gone in and entered all of these parts as being on loan. Um, here you can see the study scan is on loan, still open. Um, so from this, um, the edit loan page, you have the option to print things. Um, there's some uh, standard ones that get used a lot, and if this is uh, something you're using all the time, um, you might be able to convince Dusty to add your name to this, um, but I will just use the print any report. And then you find um, the loan invoice you want to use. I'm going to bring up this MBZ one, print report. And there, it pulled all the mammals or all the specimens from that uh, from that loan and dropped it into here. And now you can see that this is printing them out as MVZ mammals. That's not true; they're Denver mammals. And uh, we've got this header on here. So um, I went in and adapted. I downloaded their report and adapted. Uh, there's to our purposes. Um, it's a little too big. Uh, put in our name. Uh, modified this a little bit so it would uh, display the way we want. I wanted to know what that date was, the transaction date. Um, and then I also want to know what kind of loan type. Um, so I added that in. Uh, that just says that this is a returnable loan or it's for destructive sampling or whatever. Um, so I uploaded this new template and then was able to create 
our own loan invoice that looks like this. Anyway, we got our name, this in the format that we like it, and it's labeling things as being part of our collection, which is great. Um, so in that, in the handler for this loan invoice, if we go to that, um, you'll see that this one used a pre-function, and it's format loan invoice. Um, these pre-functions, as I said, manipulate the data before it sends it to that template. Um, this pre-function in particular, uh, it, um, it modifies the datum type, so the World Geodetics system um, that makes that into an acronym. Um, so what we wanted was it to say WGS84, but what it's giving us was World Geodetics and System 1984. Um, you can see what pre-functions are available. Um, if you go through the Arctos Handbook, um, if any of you aren't familiar with the Arctos Handbook, it's a great resource. There's lots of information on how to do um, a ton of stuff in Arctos. Uh, if we go to the labels page, how to create labels. Um, here is some great information, kind of running through some of the same stuff that I've gone over already. Um, but here's some note about the pre-functions. And you can see which pre-functions are already um, made. If you have some other wish, you can work with uh, our programmer to try and create your own pre-functions, but if you go to this, follow the link to the Git, GitHub page here, uh, you can see what different pre-functions are available. Um, this invoice one, I believe is way down at the bottom, format loan invoice. Um, you can see it's taking queries that have datum in them, and it's changing it into this F datum. Essentially, all it's doing is taking this World Geodetic System 1984 and making it into WGS84. Um, so you can use these pre-functions to manipulate your data um, to get it formatted the way you want. Um, personally, I have not used them a whole lot, and I would consult with Dusty um, our programmer, if you have any problems with that or if you'd like to use them. So, um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. Okay, I'm seeing some chats here. Yeah, with that, I'm going to stop talking and see if you have any questions. Um, what do you guys think? I'll just add something, Andrew. This is Aaron and at UAM. Um, just to emphasize that when you want to edit, you, you found, found a label you want to, to copy, make sure you clone it and save it as a different name uh, so that you aren't overwriting anybody's label. That, I think that's written on the how to page multiple times. And yes. Mind folks not to destroy other people's labels, but definitely rename it uh, with your own name immediately. Obviously, before you upload that new CFR file. Yeah, so... And I would also recommend not copying UAM mammal labels because <laughs> they are... They were created, they might be the first labels that were created, and they exist almost entirely in the pre-functions. And there actually isn't, uh, isn't any SQL language in there changed. So I would, when you're looking for the right label to mimic, just avoid the UAM map. Yeah, thanks Andy. Um, yeah, I've got a 
question from Carol. She says, just to be clear, the best way to make a new label is to download it, do stuff to it, and then upload it as a new name, or is it better to clone an engineer? Um, so to edit the, the cold fusion, you need to download the report. So this clone handler, um, if you do that, it says it creates a clone, and you can click OK, and then you'll see it. here. Um, but it, you still have to download the report and upload a new one. You can see it's just it's just using that same cold fusion report for each one of these. Um, so yeah, you'll be downloading the report, editing it to your purposes, changing the name, and then re-uploading it up at the top here. Yeah, and that's, it's a two-step. So, Carol, it's just um, the handler is bringing over all the, the SQL commands um, that's in an existing report, and the, you're downloading the template um, and fussing with it in Cold Fusion and um, to whatever your needs are, and then uploading it. So the two kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, so... I will just add that Cold Fusion can be very finicky. Um, <laughs> But it, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like SQL, you know, it's it's usually like you're doing something wrong, um, and then you'll realize it, and you know, it, it has to follow a very specific command. But um, yeah. So, so Andrew, after you've created that clone, you would go and click Edit Handler to rename that, correct? Yeah. I mean, yes, you don't want to get rid of the clone up, um, give it a new name. Uh, so I want to make this. Uh, a herb label, maybe. Something like that. And then I would save it. And then we can go back into our. Oops, refresh that. Um, and we've got herb skeletons here. So then that will come up when you do print any report. Um, if you're messing around with stuff like this and you're creating reports and they're not quite what you want, or if you're doing a webinar and making stuff, you want these to go away later so they're not just taking up space. If you use this delete handler, it will remove the handler. Um, where did it go? But the report. Sorry, any reports that don't have a handler um, will be deleted at the end of each day. I believe is how that works. We've got another question from Carla, where she says, maybe you can say something about the best way to learn SQL code for the handler, i.e., are there good resources for that? Um, so, I spent a lot of time looking at other people's handlers and their reports and figuring out how they got stuff to format the way they want. Um, so I kind of reverse engineered the SQL um, commands that they're using. Kind of the same with uh, Cold Fusion. I don't have a particular resource. There's lots of Googling involved whenever I'm trying to make a new code. Um, I don't know, Aaron, do you have anything? No, that's what I try to do also. Um, now, there's a lot of commas and colons and underscores that without a tutorial on SQL, it, it's, I, I don't have a good resource. I don't know of a tutorial on SQL that was helpful yeah. for me. I'll just say that usually you can just write, look at other people's templates and, um, and then and usually, you know, if they're missing a data field that you want, you can usually find it in other people's, just to see what the formatting looks like. And um, Dusty is definitely very amenable to helping you um, look over code if you just can't get something to, to format. So he's very helpful in, in the what he's doing. So there's a trial. There is a little option uh, on the handler page to um, test your handler and see if you've written things to see if it's actually pulling data the way you think it is. Um, so you can 
click that and it says success. So it works and it was pulling stuff. I don't know exactly what it's pulling when you put in 12, um, but it's, it's searching for a collection object ID or transaction ID or container ID. Um, I was working with that loan earlier, so I know that number. And it's not. Sorry, let me go back um, to my other hammer. Okay, I can go to the test SQL. This is the transaction ID for that loan. And there you can see it's actually pulling each one of those fields out properly. Um, so that suggests that the handler is working. Um, if I were to screw something up, and I forgot a comma, test the SQL, and it gives you this. It says it did not properly execute. Um, and then there's lots of information to try and help you figure out where that was. Um, usually it's this first line here where I'm finding that uh, the from keyword was not found where expect expected. Um, so not having a comma here, it was expecting the from to come right after it. It doesn't, so put that back in and it thinks it works fine. Any other questions, folks? And, I, and I'll say I've, I've done a lot of um, labels and loan invoice and header in here. And um, yeah, it is mostly trial and error. You really don't have to know SQL at all. Um, you can borrow from other collections, you have a form that you like to use, um, really kind of bumble your way through. And again, just as long as you don't copy over their template. Yeah. So uh, here's another example. We I forgot that we print our um, data sheets for our prep lab right out of Artos. Um, now when we accession material, we take all that and we catalog everything. Um, and then we can produce these data sheets so that all of the collecting in information, the uh, locality dates, any notes uh, that came from the collector directly will get populated directly onto this sheet, and then we've got the whole bottom half of the sheet for our preparator notes. Um, that's been very handy at preventing um, transcription problems. Um, so I can just show you what those look like. Oops, I pulled our bird one. Uh, but here you can see this top half of the sheet is all the data that's in Arctos. And then we've got the bottom half of the sheet was just a bunch of empty fields um, for our preparators to fill in. And then we will go back and re enter all that information into Arctos once it's prepared. Um, Carl's got another question. If we need to make a minor change to report, e.g. our own lo loan invoice, it's probably okay to just upload and replace, correct, or would we still create a case? I'm sorry, I missed the last half of that question. Um, Carla's asking if, if she just wanted to make a minor change to her loan invoice, is it all right to just upload and replace it, or would you make a copy um, just in case? Yeah, um, so that's a good point. I, I keep a copy of everything you know, on my own computer. So I have a copy of the Cold Fusion templates and a copy of um, the handler text in separate files um, so that I 
if I do screw something up on the ArcDOS reporter, I can um, salvage it and put that back up. Looks like I didn't, yeah, there's my handlers. Um, so yeah, typically what I do is I will just take my file here, change whatever I need to change, and then upload right over the other one. Yeah, I do something similar too. I have a math <coughs> a master folder that the students are not allowed to touch, um, and that's just got the copies of the templates so that we, um, you know, any sort of edits we make, we do sort of in a, in a new file copied from the original, so that we're never messing with the originals or losing. So. I would say it might be a good idea to try and do this and then if you fail to successfully edit your labels into the open office hours next month and ask for some help there. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, like I said, it's, it's a great tool. Um, it does require knowledge of two separate programming languages, <laughs> or at least um, the ability to copy and paste from other people's code. Uh, so if you're trying to do something and it's just not working, bring it up um, at those office hours. You can post comments on the GitHub uh, site. Contact us directly. Lots of, op lots of options. Yeah, agreed. Um, and again, I will post showing um, this is the Google Doc that we've started for the open office hours that will take place June 12th at 3 p.m. here at Connect. So again, if you, if you have topics or questions that you're curious about and know you're going to ask, um, you should post it there ahead of time so you can get organized around it. Um, and of course, you'll be able to um, ask things in real time as well, but just so we can kind of get a sense of, of people's questions. And yeah, GitHub, uh, Andy mentioned, is a great place to perhaps um, post your uh, uh, your cold fusion question. And edit to, to what the issue is. And again, Dusty is very helpful, uh, especially if there's something that you want to do on a label that you're not seeing in other folks' collection. For instance, um, we're doing these uh, herpetology thermal labels and um, actually want to show catalog number but also locality data. And so it's actually, I asked him if it's possible to program um, to show if I have a range, like a range um, where all the collections, all the animals in that series have the same locality. But there's several localities in the jar, but they're all from the state in Mexico, um, how to sort of consolidate he knows how to do that. <laughs> he will help you as well. And this is the, the GitHub that it's bringing up. Yeah, so it's good to, it's, it's a good idea to search in here um, for your issue before you go ahead and post a new question out there. Um, a lot of this has been covered before, uh, so you may find your answer in here already. Uh, but if not, uh, definitely go ahead and start a new issue, and uh, we will hopefully be able to help you work through it. And I'm also posting the, uh, the link to the survey uh, for this webinar, so uh, go ahead and fill that out, even if you've already done so for past webinars. It's really helpful feedback for us and writing bio. And apologies about the chat. Um, our our room got defaulted to hiding that from non-presenters. You're trying to ask something in the chat box. And yeah, thank you so much, Andy, and thanks, Aaron. And that was super helpful. And we feel like they can start getting started with making their forms. Yep, thanks, Andy. That was that was good. No, I'm glad I could help. If you guys have any questions, anything I did that uh, raised some eyebrows, uh, definitely feel free to contact me. 
Um, or if you have any questions about why I did what I did or how I did it, uh, don't hesitate. Ask me directly, um, andrew.dahl at dmns, or um, I get any of you guys post on GitHub will get to me eventually. Well, thanks so much. Thanks, everyone.